sit up back here, brother. You know, we got this here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I was thinking, we was camping. I looked and seen Brother Glenn had taught, spoke on what was on my mind. And I didn't watch it just in case my mind didn't change about what God told me to speak on. And uh, you don't want to talk about a rest for God's people. But I want to talk about it a little different than what I'm used to talking about it all. You know, if we think in creation, you know, God created the heaven and the earth six days, and then he rested, Brother Johnny. And you know, there's a rest for us that we've got to press into. And you know, it's not like the world's teaching. You know, I remember Brother Joe's dad was the first one to tell me this. And I thought, that's just plumb off the wall. And as I thought about it, and I started reading, God opened it up and showed me he was right. We turn to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23 through 29. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23 through 29. Pray for me in my voice. I've got my, my body's uh, not working real good this morning. Your brother Johnny mentioned this the Wednesday night we were here about being pleasure and sin for a season. But you know, if we want to enter into the rest of God, that season's got to end, brother Johnny. You know, I had somebody tell me, said, you'll know God got a hold of you when you start to love the things you once hated and you start to hate the things you once loved. And you know, that's the thing, is we can't be in this half-hearted. We got, we got to go in all the way. You know, we got to count the cost. And, you know, we got to get to a point in our life that, you know, you can work on a job, you're going to give a man a shovel that's going to use the shovel. And that's how God is. You know, we can't love sin and enter in. In Hebrews, it says, By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents <clears throat> because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing to rather suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. So, you know, like Brother Johnny said, you know, I thought I was having a big time in the world, you know, doing all the things that I'd done. But, you know, that season ended. March 18th, that night on my way to work. I, I wasn't smiling and laughing, Brother Johnny. I was crying. My life was in complete shambles. I had destroyed my home. Everything else seen wasn't funny no more, Sister Picky. I had to make a decision. God told me that I tried everything else to try Him. And I chose Him that night. But when I chose Him, I had to choose to leave sin behind. You know, you think about what Pharaoh gave, what Moses gave up. Pharaoh gave up that money. He gave up, you know, what, all those riches, all the perks that went with it. He gave that all up to be with the Hebrews, Brother Johnny, to be with God's people. You know, you think what we have to give up is small compared to what Moses had to give up. It says, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater than riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense, recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. You know, to me, Egypt's always a picture of sin. You know, we have to forsake sin, Brother Johnny. So through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he had destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians were saying to do were drowned. You know, in Psalms, this is just one verse, in Psalms 34 and 18 said, and you know, we want to take everything in this to a center, 
But you know, this book was wrote for God's people. <coughs> You know, we want to pass everything off to everybody else, but we need to see ourselves in this. It says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saved as such as be it the contrite spirit. Like I said a couple of weeks ago, we need to be saved every day from ourselves. You know, the thought of sin and the thought of sin in our life should give us a contrite spirit, Brother Johnny. We should be crushed. We should have a broken heart and a contrite spirit if we do something wrong, if we're struggling with something in our life. We should be crushed, Sister Sherry. We should want God's help. And God said if we have that attitude, He'll save us. But you know, we can't be dilly-dallying and sin and doing things, Brother Johnny. We've got to be pressing. And if we're pressing, God will save us from the things that we're in. He'll help us and He'll give us strength. But you know, we got to want it. You know, my wife said, when she met me, said I was one of the... Uh, Said, I had something to say about everybody. Said, is that all you do? Sit around talking about people? And you was somebody at the house a while back. And that's about all it is. Is You know, you might have, there's some honest people on there. But, you know, everywhere you go, people say, did you see what was on Facebook? You know, and somebody was at the house and they said, did you see? I said, can I ask you something? Yeah. I said, why are you friends with them on there? Well, because I'm a friend. I said, no, you're not. I said, you wouldn't be sitting here talking about them. And, you know, I thank God that God helped me with that. You know, and that's what a lot of it is, is people just send out requests so they can see what people's doing. Sister Reedy said it one time, said it's just mainly a bunch of nosiness. You know, everywhere you go, there's people talking about what everybody's doing. And, you know, instead of worrying about what they're doing, they're worrying about what everybody else is doing. But I tell you what, I thank God when I seen that I had a problem with that and I cried out to God, God help me. He'll save such that have a broken heart and a contrite spirit, Brother William. But it says, we get down to Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. And I'm going to get on the main parts of the lesson. It's one I'd never thought of before the other night I sat there studying. This was on my mind and when I started reading. I started seeing things a little, I mean, it's the same, but just a little more. It says, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. You know, there came a point in my life where I was finished, Sister Sherry. I was finished. I had hurt my wife. I hurt my family. I hurt my son. I was hurt God by the things that I was doing. I was finished. But you know, the preachers wasn't taking me far enough. They wasn't telling me enough. Everything they was preaching, Brother Johnny, was carnal. And you know, when God opened it up to me, God showed me that I was in a place, the preacher saying, as soon as I believed that I had the Holy Ghost, but I didn't have the Holy Ghost. And I had to go back and admit that I didn't have the Holy Ghost. I had to go back and admit that I taught false doctrine, that I had baptized people wrong. But God opened this rest up to me and I seen that I needed to go farther. That, you know, that I was killed, had my works, that I needed to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of my sins and I needed to be filled with the Holy Ghost until I spake with tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. But I seen that it wasn't as easy as what they were preaching out there. That, you know, I had to get to a point where sin wasn't a, a fiddling around thing. Sin was a serious thing that you hated, that you parted from, that you didn't partake in bad conversations, that you didn't partake in watching bad things and enjoy rejoicing in iniquity. You know, if I wanted God to fill me up, I needed to clean the house up for him to live in. You know, I couldn't take, the Bible talks about hating this garment even stained with sin. You know, we got to get where the point where we hate sin, that we don't want no part of it. Not be afraid to tell people, say, I don't want to hear what you got to say. You know, not partaking, not partaking their dirty jokes, not partaking their gossip. Tell them, you know, I don't want to hear that. God's changed me. In, uh, in Isaiah, and this is, you know, something I thought, Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9 through 3. Like I, or 9 through 13. Turn to Isaiah chapter 28, verses 9 through 13. You know, like I said, I didn't watch Brother Glenn because I didn't want to, I didn't want to get up here and I want to let God speak to me and not come up here and repeat what he said. It says, Whom shall he teach knowledge? 
And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? You know, like Brother Johnny says, people don't want to hear doctrine nowadays. They just want a couple of simple verses. But you know, the whole word, you know, I thank God where I came from, they handed you a book. And you had to obey that book. You know, it had their bylaws and their guidelines in it. But you know, I thank God we don't have a book like that. We have a Bible. We go by the Bible and that's our doctrine. That's our teaching. Those are the things we go by. We don't have a man-made book or a man-made organization. We got a God-spoken Bible and that's what we go by. But it said, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. You know, we don't get it all over overnight. We don't get it all in one day. It's a growing process, but it's got to be precept upon precept, line upon line. It's got to be according to the word of God every step of the way. It says, for stammering lips, for with stammering lips and another tongue, Will he speak to the, this people to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith he may cause the weary to rest and the refreshing. And this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. What do you think about when you're weary? This is something I never thought of before. When you think about weary, you think about being tired. Just about being down, you know, just with everything that's going on. It's the weary. It's talking about this rest is for a people that's tired of sin. It's people that's tired of being in the world. That's going along with everything, Brother Johnny. This is talking to a people that want to be different. They want to be lived different. They're tired of sin. They want to change and they realize that they can't do this on their own. That they need God's help in what they're doing. You know, this isn't just for everybody. This is people that are fed up with sin and they're tired of everything that's going on and want to change in their lives. And God said that rest is for them. And we have to believe that. If we're fed up with sin, Brother Johnny, and we confess that we need God to help us in our life, God will fill us with the Holy Ghost just like He did the people in here. But we can't still love sin. We can't still like sin. We've got to be fed up with sin to the point that it makes us sick that if we do something wrong, that we want to go with God, that we've got a broken heart and a contrite spirit, that we want God to help us and change us so we can go on forward and we can bring a life for Him, Brother Glenn. This ain't for somebody that's wanting to dilly-dally around in sin. You know, like the preachers preach today, like I said, I've never in my life heard anybody that claimed to be a Christian talk dirty. And nowadays, it's people, you know, post and they'll talk about Jesus this and Jesus that, talking filthy. Well, the Bible says if you've got filth that comes out of your mouth, it's coming because you've got a filthy mind. It says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If you tell dirty jokes, it's because you've got a dirty mind. Yeah. If you tell dirt, say dirty words, it's because you've got a dirty mind. And, you know, that's God saying that. That's not my thoughts on it. You know, I used to have the most vulgar, filthy mouth that I ever heard in my life. But when I repented of my sins, God changed that. I didn't have that old dirty mouth anymore. I slipped up and said one word in, in 18 years. And that was right after I repented. I was praying for Brandy. And, you know, she don't like the put. She's private with everything. And, you know, I, I made her upset. And, you know, she was leaving. And, uh. I said something, and it was pouring the rain, and when I did it, I felt conviction, Brother Glenn, and I dropped down in the mud and the rain in the backyard and repented right then and there, and it's never happened again. You know, I was sorry that God fixed it, but you know, if there's, if there's filth in our mind, it's going to come out of our mouth. You know, that's how you can tell a fruit. It's what it comes out of its mouth. Mom said one time, said, why is that all you want to talk about is Jesus? I said, well, he's in my heart, Mom. That's what's going to come out of my mouth. She said, well, you can talk about something else, too. I said, well, that's what I like to talk about. You know, I always people get right with God so I can talk to him about Jesus. There's not many people you can talk to him. Brother, Brother Johnny in spirit and truth. Everybody wants to talk about everything else. What's wrong about talking about Jesus? What's wrong with lifting him up? What's wrong with glorifying Him? You know, He created us for His purpose, not Amen. ours. It says, to whom, to whom He said, this is the rest, wherein you shall cause the weary to rest. You know, I thank God that night, I was so broken hearted. God revealed to me what I had done to Him. I see that I not only sinned against myself, I had sinned against Him. 
that I not only hurt my wife, that I hurt him, that I was destroying my family, and I was very weary that night, Brother Joe. God help me, Brother Bill. God help me. When I cried out with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, you know, it's been so long since I watched some of these TV, anybody on TV, because you're not going to hear the truth on TV. But you know, people come down the aisle and they're laughing and giggling. I tell you what, you, you can't be sorry for your sins and be laughing and giggling. That's not of God. You're going to be sorry when you've done wrong. You know, and if we're in this today and if we got the Holy Ghost and we do wrong, we're still going to be sorry. And I tell you what, if you can get, if you can sin and not feel chastised, but the Bible says you're an illegitimate child, you're born out of wedlock. You know, it's just plain and simple. God loves us enough to chasten us and to let us know we're wrong, Brother Johnny. And if you love him, why would you not want to know that you're wrong? Amen. Want to do right. Amen. It says, but the word of the Lord was under the precept upon precept. Upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. You know, it's got to be according to the word of God. Everything we do has got to be according to the word of God. You know, where I came from, the preacher said, because I said so. I came here, Brother Glenn said, because the Bible says so. You know, people, they, they'd ask their pastors and they'd say, well, because my pastor said. Brother Glenn says, because the Bible says. Brother Johnny says, because the Bible says. It's because it's got to be done according to the word of God. If you get the Holy Ghost, you will speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. If your pastor tells you anything the other way, he's uninformed and he's ignorant to the word of God. I'm not going to say he's a liar. Maybe he don't know yet, but he's uninformed to the word of God. He's ignorant, Brother Glenn, to the word. Because when they got in here, they spake in tongues. That's right. And if we get it, we're going to speak in tongues. Amen. You know, it's just according to the word of God. If we get baptized... We're going to get baptized the way they did in here in the name of Jesus Christ. And you know, they said, Brother Taylor said, I think it was, he'd give them, give them his house if they could find somewhere where anybody baptized any way other than the name of Jesus Christ. And when he died, he still had his house. You know, because nobody can prove it wrong. It's got to be according to the word of God. If we're not baptized the right way, we still got our sins. You know, people got mad at me, and I've lost loved ones over that. But you know, it's the truth. I'd rather have people not love me here as to be in hell and thinking I didn't help. You know, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 through 21, you know, we think about resting from our works. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 through 21. You know, I thank God that he created another way for us. It says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. We can't do the things that we would, the, the things that the old man would do. We can't do those things anymore because we're supposed to be a new man in Christ. Amen. You know, this is the added nature. The fleshly works. God, the first six days, he created animals. He created birds. He created the land. He did all the natural things. And on the seventh day, he rested. You know, when we become weary after all of our work, when we're fed up with that pleasure in sin, Brother Glenn, there's a rest for us. I can rest. It was hard. The Bible says the way of a transgressor is hard. The life that I lived was hard. It was hard on me. It was hard on my family. It was hard on my mom coming having to get me from the place that she did. It was hard on everybody around me. But this way is not hard. And you know, I used to say the things, you know, this is a hard message. This is a hard message. You know, I used to want people to think I was I was a hard teacher, but it's not hard. The Word of God is never hard. It's people's hearts that are hard. There's never such thing as a hard message. 
It's hard hearts for receivers that they don't want to hear it. The Bible says the way of a transgressor is hard. The word of God's not hard. It's for our benefit. Amen. It's for our to help us to go forward, Brother Johnny. My yoke is easy. That's it. that's what I was getting to. In my burden is light, and the word of God if for the preacher is a burden. It's light. Sometimes it feels heavy because we're worried about delivering it wrong or worried about hurting somebody. But the word of God is not hard if you want to live right. Amen. Like Brother Bill said, the word don't have to cut you. You know, Brother Johnny, with your open heart surgery, you needed to have your heart fixed, didn't you? Feel better now, don't you? Not mad at the doctor because he fixed you. The people say, I love God, but the preacher will get on their life and they get mad. Maybe you don't love God as much as you think you do, or the word wouldn't be so bad. Maybe there's some transgression in your life is the reason you're getting upset at the word. Because if you truly love God, you'd love his word and you'd thank somebody for delivering God to you. You'd thank him for delivering that word. There's some transgression somewhere in your life. If that message is hard because there's sin in your life because the Bible says the way of a transgressor is hard. The way of a child of God is not hard. It's because our flesh is worn against our spirit. You know, that's, that's the battle of Armageddon. That's the battle that we're fighting is to let that spiritual man win. So if a message is hard, it's because there's sin in our life. And you know, we need to empower the spiritual man. We need to feed him to overcome and pray for God to help us. Amen. The word of God's not hard. There's really no such thing as a hard message. It's, it's the ears of the believer that don't want to hear. Jesus stand, said, I stand at the door and knock. Where's the door? It's our ear. He's trying to get in with his word. But we have to let him in and come in and sup and fellowship with his word. We have to be in fellowship with his word. It says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery. You don't mean you got to go out and be with another woman or another man. It's when that woman walks by and you give her a second look and think, man, oh man, and you start having thoughts. That's adultery. You're cheating in your mind. You don't have to cheat with your hands. You can cheat with your mind. Fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft. You know, everybody thinks about witchcraft as a little green lady with a wart on her nose riding on her boom like Bugs Bunny cartoons. But witchcraft's rebellion. You know, you're going to listen to the word of God. Like Brother Glenn said, he repeated what Brother Taylor said. You know, if I'm your pastor, you're going to listen to what I say. If you don't listen, that's called rebellion. It's called witchcraft. Uh, hatred, variances, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. You know, hatred. I had a cousin that my mom can testify to this, that he, he was at the house and the last thing he heard was the action on 380 slap of me coming out of the bedroom. And time I come out of the bedroom, Brother Johnny, he done out the door in his truck and was heading down the road. You know, I hated him. When I waved at him, I always waved at him a certain way. But that March 18th, it wasn't long after that that I drove by and I passed him and I was waving with all five fingers. You know, that wasn't me that changed that because I hated him with every bit of me. I always said a bunch of things I was going to do when he died. But when I repented of my sins, Brother Johnny, that hatred was gone and I was waving at him. I have not even took him three pop and stuff since then, Brother Glenn. He didn't change, but God changed me. He's still the same person, but God changed me. I'm not the same person. You know, the Bible says it make our enemies be at peace with us. Yeah, you know, amen. God will change us. Amen. But we've got to be sick of sin. Wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murder, drunkenness, revil revilings, and such like, of which I tell you that before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You know, people talk about getting to heaven, but just to get filled, to be access to the kingdom of God down here, we can't do these things. We can't have them in our life. We have to be weary of these things. You know, these things should make our flesh weary. You know, I don't want to have hatred toward anybody. I don't want to have malice toward anybody. 
I don't want to have uncleanness under the sin of this fornication. You know, that was something God had to, you know, I, this isn't boastful. I feel shame. The Bible says, blessed is the man undefiled. You know, we don't teach our children enough nowadays that they need to stay separate. Not be out dating everything going around that they need to pray and wait for the one that God asked for. Because God said, blessed is the, you know, I had a church guy said, well, my son still got some oats to sow. No, you need to tell him, God said, blessed is the bed undefiled. You know, I, I'm ashamed of my life. I'm ashamed of the things I've done. I wish when I got married, I could have said that I've only been with one person because God said it's a blessing in there. But nobody taught me that. I defiled. I lost out on that blessing. I thought it would be big to be like the older ones, you know. You have to go out with this one, then go out with this one, then go out with this one. You know, I was a shameful person. I did a lot of people wrong. I'm not like that anymore. I couldn't even when I got in. You know, I, I, I was playing Yahoo pool with guys at work one day. And I hadn't struggled with it since I got in. in. And I seen who I was playing with and I clicked on their profile picture. Well, when it opened it up, it was a bad picture. But it just opened up and I just, I let the devil right back in, Brother Tommy. And you know, that was something Brandy said she never tolerated. It was me looking at anything like that. I got right back into watching stuff that I shouldn't supposed to be doing. She found out. We was getting a divorce. God gave me another chance. And I repented. And you know, she was still leaving. And I said, you know, God gave me another chance. And I'm asking you to forgive me. And I said, if you walk away, you're saying you can do something God can't. Because he gave me another chance and forgive me. And if he forgives me, you got to forgive me. And she said, you know, as bad as I hate to say it, you're right. And you know, the Bible said divorce is granted for hardness of heart. She didn't harden her heart, Brother Johnny. She did what was right. And she Amen. forgave me. You know, people don't want to don't want to admit stuff like that anymore. But it was granted for the hardness of heart. She had grounds for divorce. I had committed adultery by looking at bad stuff. Plain and simple. I was guilty. She had grounds. She forgave me. And you know now we're closer than we've ever been. We're best friends. This, you know, God will change us. But you know, I, I knelt down at my mom's hope chest that she get ready. And I said, Lord, you either take, please either take my eyesight or take my life. But don't let me struggle looking at women anymore. I want to be a good husband. I want to be a good father. I don't want to look at anybody other than my wife. And God healed me from that, Brother Glenn. And that was, you know, drugs, alcohol, that was the greatest addiction I had in my life was looking at other women. And God healed me. I don't look at other women now. I have no desire for other women. You know, we went and uh, the pool was right there. And we walked by and I see somebody in a bathing suit and it made me sick, you know, to the fact that somebody would walk around looking like that. And it's like, I wonder now how to be in, why do people want me in looking at their wife like she's a trophy? Or how do fathers let their little girls dress like that? Knowing how they used to think about girls, I could never stand that another man was looking at my daughter and thinking the things that I used to think, Brother Joe. I just, I couldn't handle that. But, you know, God made those changes in my life. You know, I become weary with sin. I didn't want to hurt my wife anymore. When I did, God gave me another chance. And he healed me to where I'm not like that anymore. And, you know, I thank God that he did that. Because I never made it bad. I couldn't give that up on my own. I couldn't quit smoking and chewing on my own. But when I gave them to God, Brother Joe, he fixed it. He took care of it. I never had a craving when I asked him to take the cigarettes and stuff away, I never had another craving. And before then, if I tried to quit, I was a mean and miserable and hateful human being because I chewed two cans of stuff and two packs of cigarettes a day. Miserable. And God took them just like that. But, you know, we've got to become tired of wrong. As long as we enjoy it, 
We're not going to get nowhere with God. I've got to figure out how to work this thing. It's smarter than I am. Acts chapter 3, verses 19 through 21. Acts chapter 3, verses 19 through 21. Yeah, this first word is a word that a lot of people don't mention anymore. It's repentance. Repentance is something that a lot of people don't talk about. They talk about believing anymore. But you can believe all you want. If you don't repent, you're not going to get nowhere. It says, repent ye therefore and be converted. Being converted means changed. That your sins may be blotted out. When the time, here's this word again. It's only mentioned twice in the Bible. In Isaiah 28 and Acts chapter 3. It says, when the time of the refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ. I thought he's going to send the Holy Ghost. That's exactly right. He is the Holy Ghost. See, people that say that God will send the Holy Ghost right here say He's going to send Jesus Christ. Same one. Send Jesus Christ, which before you was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive. See, this ain't talking about the prophecy of Him coming as a Savior. This is even after. This is afterwards. Said you must receive until the times of restitution of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. You know, refreshing. You know, you think when you're so tired, you take a power nap. You wake up and you feel refreshed. You're out and you're hot and you're thirsty and you're run down and you take a big glass of ice water and you're refreshed. You know, when I, when God changed me, when I repented, when I was converted, I felt refreshed. You know, I was in church six or seven years before I came here. And I still felt the weight of my sins upon me. But now I feel refreshed. I feel changed. I've been converted. I'm not the same person. I'm not carrying the weight of my sin around anymore. You know, you're walking around all your life with a hundred pound bag of feed on your back. And then when it finally comes off, it's going to be refreshing. You're going to feel good that you don't have those sins no more. That you're not bound by those things anymore. God said we've been freed from sin. We don't, have, we don't have to willfully sin anymore. We have a choice. We're free from that. Sister Chair, we're not bound by sin. Pray for me. I didn't get much sleep last night. It says in Galatians chapter 5, this is that rest we go into. This is what that rest produces. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 26. If you guys have a question, please feel free to ask. The only bad question is the one you don't ask. Well, the only bad question with good intentions. That you, people can ask bad questions with wrong intentions. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. You know, when I wave with all five fingers at that cousin of mine, that was love. That hatred was gone. And God replaced it with love. Joy. And peace. Long suffering. Gentleness. Goodness. Faith. Before when I was done with you, don't get me wrong, when I was done with you, God taught me to be long suffering. He's long suffering with me. That's the fruit. This is the rest. These are the things that we can have in God's rest. We rest from being the old way and the Adam nature. And we enter into the nature of Christ. Meekness. Temperance. Again, such there is no law. You know, meekness. I still need work on being meekness. You know, but before I would walk around and I'd have a big old herringbone chain on. And, uh, yeah, that's, I can't remember what the herringbone was a flat one. And then I had a great big old rope chain, had a nugget on it, I had a watch on it, had a diamond in it, had a big gold nugget looking bracelet around here, I had one here, had a big diamond ring on my finger, you know, I had tattoos all over my earrings, a tongue ring, and you know, I was always showing that stuff off. I had an old man at work, he'd he run the packer, and I'd stick my tongue out. And he'd, he'd look at me like that every time I'd walk by, I'd stick that tongue ring out at him. 
But you know, God changed that flashy, haughty spirit and give me a spirit of meekness, Brother Johnny. I don't want nobody looking at me. I don't want to do things to draw attention to myself. You know, sometimes I put a shirt on and I said this, like that one my mom gave me. I wore it once for mom, but it's like it had them names all over it. I just thought, you know, that draws attention to that. I don't want to, I've not worn it since. You know, I don't want to draw attention to me. I want to draw attention to Christ. But before, you know, I had that truck and I had the, the ground effects on it. I had the Texas tail on it, the sun visor, and I had the stereo thing in it. And, you know, I wanted to draw attention to use it for my benefit. And I had the sports car. I had all that stuff. And I wanted to draw attention. I don't want to draw attention to me. I want to draw attention to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And if I'm all flashy and haughty, I'm not drawing attention to nobody but myself. I'm not glorifying nobody but myself. You know, all that fancy stuff don't do nothing but bring attention to you. But we have a meek and a gentle spirit that brings attention to Christ. It says, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not desire vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. You know, a lot of people want to be lifted up, want to be glorified, want to be looked at. But God don't want us to be like that. You know, I don't care if anybody thinks I'm handsome, but my wife. I dress to please God first, and then my wife second. I ask her if she likes how this looks, or does this match? Do I look okay in this? You know, as, as it's modest first, and then if it pleases her second, Brother Johnny, because she's got to walk around with me, so I want her to like what I wear. It says in John chapter 3, verse 1 through 8. John chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. You know, we've got to, people do away with these verses. But, you know, the Bible means what it says, and it says what it means. And, you know, there's so many people. And, you know, I was one of them liars, Sister Sherry. Because God showed this to me. First, I was ignorant. And then Brother Joe's dad showed it to me, and I seen it. And I was scared. And it took a while for me to come out. So there at the end, I was lying. It says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. A ruler of the Jews. So that's why you make sure everybody that speaks is telling you the truth. Because I'm sitting here telling you, people get behind the pulpit and they lie. Because I, shame on me, I did I knew what I was doing was wrong, but I was scared to come out. I just kept holding on that maybe I was wrong. You know, but I knew deep down that what I was doing was wrong when God showed me. And I had to come out. You make sure what people were telling me is right. Because I'm telling you right now, I was one that stood in lot. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You know, we've got to die out to sin and be born again. Yep. The old man that I was, Brother Bill, wasn't good enough. He wasn't good enough. He was... Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He can't even see it unless he be changed. You know, I had family argue one time about men standing here in shoe leather that wouldn't perish until they see the kingdom of God coming. Well, one of them thought that, you know, somebody was going to still be here from them. That's not what that means. They seen the kingdom of God come the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost fell. That's what I was talking about. Well, the apostles ain't still here 2,000 years later, <coughs> hiding around, dressed in a flannel shirt, hiding, sitting somewhere, waiting for this to happen. You know, it's already happened. It happened the day of Pentecost. The people were looking for something else. They're looking carnal. says, that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it list, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell where it cometh, and whither it goeth, 
so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. You know, you think you're inside, the baby's inside the mother. And then when she gives birth, her water breaks. And then when the baby comes out, you know, I got mad and I didn't know what to expect. Caden was the first birth I ever seen. When that nurse smacked him with a button, he started crying. I was mad. But, you know, first he had to break water. And, well, first the seed had to be planted. Then the baby started to grow. Then the water breaks. Then it cries out. The Word of God's got to be planted. People have to repent. Then they have to break water, Brother Johnny. They have to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they're going to cry out. They're going to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gives utterance when God gives them that breath of life. In Romans chapter 6, verse 1 through 8, you know, Paul addresses this, you know, pretty plainly here, I think. You know, I was taught all my life that no matter what you done, that, you know, God, God didn't care. You know, you were his child and that he loved you regardless. God does love you regardless. But you can get out of his will and you can backslide. You can turn away from God. And, you know, I think if people would just read this, that Paul's talking to people like them. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. And, you know, I had, I had a guy say one time, I said, then people will be all right if they just understand grace. And what he meant by that was grace covered you going out and doing anything you wanted to do. And grace happened on the cross. Is that was God's unmerited favor. That while I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me and you. That's grace. When I go out and willfully <coughs> sin, that's a disgrace. <clears throat> Said, how shall we live that are dead to sin? Live any longer therein? <clears throat> know ye not that so many of us that were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him in baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in a newness of life. We have a new life. There's a refreshing there, Brother Johnny. You know, we have a new life. We don't have to live that old sinful, wicked life. For if we then have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. See, we have to be dead to sin, hate sin, brother, man, weary of it, don't want no part of it. Fed up with that life. Here's the one you said a minute ago, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. Turn to Matthew chapter 11, 28 through 30. You know, it's, it's just like reading a picture book. When God opens up your understanding. You know, things were so confusing before. But you know, when God gives you the Holy Ghost and he starts opening up your understanding, it's just like everything from Genesis to Revelation, brother. It's like a puzzle. It just all fits together and you see one big picture. Mm -hmm. It says, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden. Doesn't that sound like the weary? And I'll give you rest. You know, mom. Mom was a good mom when I was growing up. Still a good mom. You know, I have a bad day and I was little. I come home from school. You know, I was the tiniest kid in school, so you know what that means. You know, I come home to mom and I'd be broke down. And you know, mom would always grab me and hug me, and tell me she loved me. And you know, that was refreshing. And you know, that's how God is. We're tired of sin. We're tired of doing wrong. God's got a refreshing for us. We don't have to live that life anymore. God will fill us with his Holy Ghost and we can live a life and he'll help us live a life. You know, mom couldn't go to school with me. You know, nobody can take them licks that I took, but I had to take them. But in this life, if we give our life to God and we're fed up with sin, God will walk through it with us. He will fill us with the Holy Ghost. He'll lead us and guide us. He'll strengthen us. He'll keep us. And when we go through things, it's like we can feel Him put His loving arms around us and comfort us. He is the Comforter. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the Almighty God. He's the Everlasting Father. He's the Strong Tower. He's our refuge. 
You know, he's everything. We got to stop seeing it. We got to stop wanting to see it. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. You know, yoke is like you take an oxen, and it, it went like this. And you'd have a stronger ox here, and you put a younger ox with him, and he would teach him. He would pull. And you know, if this one was tired, that older one would help him pull it. Jesus said, his, said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Does that sound like he's hard? Don't sound like he's hard, does it? Word's not hard. It's getting over our nature that's hard. Having forgiveness that's hard. It's, it's those things that we have to do. But you know, if we walk in the Spirit, it's not hard to forgive. You know, as Sister Sherry, if she does anything, she's worried about offending you. But you know, I know within my heart she'd never do anything to offend me. So it's like, you know, but before, I was quick to get offended. But you know, it's like God will make a change. God's word's not hard. It's us that makes it hard if we don't want to go against it. For my yoke is easy and my burden, the word is light. It's light. 1 Peter 5 through 7. It's getting close. I'll read this real quick. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 5 through 7. says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all ye be subject unto one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and he giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, with the mighty hand of God, that ye may, he may exalt you in due time. And you know, it took me a while to get the Holy Ghost. Took me a long time. But you know, we have to come to a point where we know that we cannot. People say you need the Holy Ghost to get to heaven. You need the Holy Ghost to get from Monday to Friday, get to Monday to Tuesday. You know, I'm going through things now that if I didn't have the Holy Ghost and I was trying to get through, that there's no way I can make it without God helping me. We've got to have the Holy Ghost. And if we want it and we need it, and we know that we can't get through this life without it, God will give it to us. But we got to be fed up with sin. we got to realize that there's nothing in ourselves that can make it through this life without God and say, God, I'm dependent on you. God, I need you. And God will fill us with the Holy Ghost. God will give us more of the Holy Ghost. I need more of the Holy Ghost, Brother Glenn, because the trials are getting rougher, they're getting harder. I need more of God's Spirit. I need to hate sin even more and draw to God even more. Sister Vicki, in these last days, I need more. I tell you what, we're facing things that we've never faced before. You know, you let a man, you know, we, we went on that thing and here comes a man. I always take my little girls to the bathroom, always. And for some reason that day I didn't. And here come a man out of the bathroom with my little girl. I tell you what, if I hadn't had God in my life, they'd have put me in, they'd have put me in jail in the Bahamas. But I thank God that God's in there and God will calm the storms. I tell you what, we need God to keep us in line. You know, because that wasn't my nature. That wasn't my nature to let him. God have picked up something. But you know, God's changed that nature. We're facing things and we're going to face things worse than that. We need the Holy Ghost to get through. Don't ever think you're so big and mighty that you don't need God to get through things because if we think we're lifting ourselves up, we're going to fall. I need Him. You know, He's made me a better husband. I still need to be a better husband. I still don't think I'm a good dad. I think I need to be a lot better dad. You know, but God's working on that too, Brother Bill. I need a lot of work still. But I admit that I can't do it on my own. You know, I've learned to get out of God's way because when I get in it, I make stupid decisions. Like rushing into that stupid back surgery and the doctor messing me up. I rushed into that. I didn't pray and wait on God. I wanted to get fixed and get back to work. He said, I promise I can have you back to work in three months. I said, let's do it. Well, he was wrong. I should have prayed more. I should have sought God more. Psalms chapter 51, verse 10 through 17 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me.
Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. I didn't think, I didn't think stuff like that could happen today in the in faith. People preaching about sin, Brother Johnny, and keep the Holy Ghost. David said, Don't 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 withdraw your spirit from me. You know, they wouldn't feel like we are today. But you know, God's Spirit dealt with them. It says, Restore unto me the joy of my salvation, and uphold with me thy free spirit. Then will I teach trans transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltness. O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth should, shall show forth. Show forth thy praise, for thou desireth not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou decideth not in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken heart and a contrite spirit. O oh God, thou will not despise. You know, God wants us to turn to him. Realize that we need him, Brother Johnny. You know, I don't want to get off track. This last one I want to finish here. Brother Bill mentioned something talking about the kingdom of God. You know, that the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You know, righteousness has to come first. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things. Don't seek to speak in tongues. Seek righteousness. Mm -hmm. Turn away from sin. Stop sinning. Seek righteousness and God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. But the first thing is righteousness and peace and joy. But it seems like the first thing you lose, it's like it's opposite. You lose your joy, and that's your strength. Then you've got no peace. And then before long, you start doing things you never do. It's like it comes righteousness, joy, or righteousness, peace, joy. And then it goes peace, joy, righteousness. You know, we've got to live righteous. We've got to hate sin. But when we seek righteousness... God will fill us with the Holy Ghost, Brother Johnny. But he said it's for the weary to rest. We've got to be sick of sin, sick of the things that goes on. And God will fill us for his glory and for his purpose. I love you all. Brother Glenn, Brother Johnny.